What's going on, traders? Sean here, tuning in again with Neural Street Trading Academy, and I want to welcome you to another Trade Room Recap. Now, today was an interesting day, and uh, before I get into all the details, what I suggest you do is you click subscribe, turn the notification bell on, and then give us a thumbs up if you like the content, because the whole purpose of these videos is to help you become a better trader and understand how we look at the markets using our strategies, our systems, our analysis, and our education. So first things first, I always like to do these recaps following the trade room because what it allows me to do is allows me to talk about some of the concepts that we do and more importantly help you understand. Uh, today was an interesting day. Uh, the IMF reported that uh, there was some stuff with coronavirus that'd be more more problematic than, than we expected. And then ultimately we had a crude inventory report, which, you know, indicated we had much more inventory and they just flushed the S&P and they just flushed uh, the crude markets. I spend most of my time trading gold today. And really, it was uh, an interesting day. I think the biggest lesson for today was on teaching traders how to own a mistake and then also how to re-engage using better analysis. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to talk about transparency. Um, it's really important for traders, myself included, to, to reward ourselves when we do a good job and then when we make a mistake to fix it. Don't shame yourself. Don't sit there in, in troubled waters. Use it to fuel knowledge. Use it to help understand how to do things differently next time. And if you're given an opportunity to fix the mistake during live markets, do so. I'll give you an example. Today I started out the day I took a stop out right out the gates. A little bit battered, you know, I was like, come on, man. Yesterday was a break-even day. Give me a stop out right out the gates. But then what ended up happening is I had an opportunity on gold. And while I was looking at crude oil, I missed my entry. So when I went back to gold, it hit my target before I had a chance to even go in and re-enter. And so my emotions kicked in and I re-entered anyways. And that's a big no-no, right? So I'm sitting here on the mic in front of a whole bunch of traders and I'm saying, guys, yep. I just made a huge mistake and uh, I got to fix it. As soon as, the pro as soon as the trade got profitable or I could get out of the position, I just closed it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I made a mistake, now I can fix it. And really the lesson for that was trade management because the trade ended up going against me. And that trade hit initial targets, the re-entry went against me. And that's really, really, really valuable. Second of all, today was a huge lesson on using strong momentum for trend trades. And I want to talk about how we had a double whammy on the frequency setups because we had a huge short on gold. I ended up taking the trend trade. I got a nice chunk out of it. The trade on the frequency was a huge trade. And then I got the, I got the second pullback for back-to-back -back wins on gold. I ended profitable for the morning, pulled myself out of a losing situation, had back-to-back -back profits. It was a great trading day and uh, it was just all around a great learning day too. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about gold. We won't go into the S&P and oil today but what we'll do is is uh, we'll talk about gold and we'll talk about what the trades I took and the mistakes that I made and I fixed and then that way you can learn from it because the purpose of these videos is if you're not learning and it's not valuable right. I mean if you want to you want to come to a sales webinar where we sell software and we do all that well we can we can send you an email to our list but if you want to learn how to trade these recap videos are really important to help you know, talk about the do's and the don'ts, right? So first thing we do is we look at the auction, okay? And the auction sentiment was down. So whenever the auction sentiment is shifting down, what we do is we identify the low volume locations for areas. So we come in here and we turn on all the low volume nodes to see where the pockets of volume are. And then we also want to make sure that we know the wave count that we're in. So if we look at gold, uh, today when we came into the market, we were trading down here. And I told the traders, I said, that's the end of wave one impulse. So if we rip up, we're going into corrective territory. When we're in corrective territory, what we do is we want to pull the retracements. Okay. We want to pull the retracements just like this. And then we want to look for low volume pockets. So let's go back to the software that shows us the low volume pockets. Bear with me here. Let me load this up. And we'll go in here and we'll take a look at the low volume nodes, okay? And what I do is I look for confluence. So what we're doing is we're looking for confluence on these areas. Now, you're going to see here that we've got really strong confluence 
at the 50 and a low volume pocket. Now I tried to short that. I missed the entry and that's okay. That's just part of the business. But what ended up happening is I tried to engage in a trend trade after, and I want to teach you a lesson. I want to teach you a lesson about understanding when the trend is expected to give you follow through versus when it's not. I'm going to turn off our frequency software so that we don't get uh, too many things on the chart. And I want to talk a little bit about, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening here. So this was the, this was, uh, let's turn the waves off. So I like to keep a clean chart for this demonstration. I just want to talk about the trend for a second. Okay. So this was the leg of wave one. That was wave one on the higher time frame. Once we break above the average and we put in a pattern reversal, okay, that's technically the end of leg one. Now we're moving into wave two correction. And what ends up happening a lot of times is wave two correction will come in, okay, wave two correction will come in and I want to teach you something from a mistake that I made earlier on crude oil. I made the same mistake on crude oil, and I'll never make that mistake ever again. In fact, the biggest thing I've learned over the years of teaching traders is when you make a mistake and you can see a pattern and you're like, hey, what's happening there? You go deep into the information. You look at your indicators. You look at the structure. You say, okay, what is taking place that you can fix? And the number one thing that I noticed was that the strong oscillators were showing uh, uptrends in momentum. And, and this is something that I never really paid attention to. And I've, been, and I've been running trade rooms for a long time. I want to teach you something today because by following this rule, by fixing this stop out, I took a huge short later on the day and I made back all my money. So th let me explain this. We put in the lows here. We had a higher high in price in the oscillator. We put in a higher low here which is divergence, right? Everybody can see the divergence. But what ended up happening is we popped up with a higher high. And then we had a higher low. You can see the trend in the oscillator. Okay, you can see the trend in the oscillator. So the problem with this is that we're making lower lows in here on that trend pullback, and we're making higher lows on strong momentum. To me, this is a really, really big wake up call that I hope that you can learn from my mistake because I didn't realize it until after. And I'm like, man, I'll never do that again. I got squeezed out on that. Okay. But what ended up happening, okay. Later in the day, we waited for the re-opportunity and man, did we make a killing on that trade. So what we'll do here is I want to talk about where I missed the opportunity for the short. I missed the opportunity for this short. Okay. Up here on the 50% uh, rollover, because what ended up happening, okay, is we got the opportunity here, but it was far away from the area. I don't like to chase price. So if you take a look up here, that was my area of confluence. And what we do is we wait for price to become over bought on our excursion levels, and we wait for that momentum rollover, right? Well, that happened here at the close of that bar, and uh, I didn't get a chance to get into that. It, it just, it, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to enter. I could have entered here. It would have been a reversal trade for me. I just missed the fill and it just was a trade that I didn't get. So I took the short here, made the mistake, got paid, got, got kicked out of that. And then what ended up happening, okay, is the market pushed back up. Now you'll see here, we had another opportunity to take this trend trade here. I didn't take it because we were not making lower lows in momentum. So this is why I didn't take any further trades on the trend side, and I waited. Now, here's the, here's the real kicker. Because of that stop out, deep down, I was like, man, you know, I, yesterday I had a break-even day. Today, you know, I kick in with a loss right out the gates. I'm like, man, the, the confidence is a little bit better. You know, every, the talk that everybody goes through, right, the trader talk, right? And uh, so what I ended up doing was I got into this, this, this was the short right here. In fact, this was the trade right here that I had an opportunity to, to short up here, okay, right in here, and uh, it hit the target before I had an opportunity to engage. I entered on the retest, and it was a big no-no. It was a really, really big no-no because it already hit the target. And so as soon as I got an opportunity, I closed out of that position.
because I, I'd already missed the opportunity. And so that was a huge lesson on management. When you enter for an emotional reason, don't do it. And let me show you what ended up happening, right? Prices are making higher highs. Momentum's making higher highs, right? This is a counter-directional trade that's not expected to roll the market over yet. And so it was a really good decision to get out, right? Because I would have got stopped out here. Now, here's the better decision. <laughs> Once the market shows you that it's ready to drop, look what ended up happening here. We took out lower lows in structure, lower lows in price, lower lows in structure, lower lows in momentum. You get the trend trade pullback here, and those are the big trades, especially at the end of wave two correction. Because this is the first time that we're getting lower lows in price, lower lows in momentum on the follow through. Now I wanna point out something. At the exact same time, we were getting a ratio short on this environment. And I said, traders, you can be in this trade already for the ratio short. Okay, I'm gonna clean off the volume here so that we can see those levels a little bit easier. Just like this. And they're really tanky gold, man. Okay, I wanna take a look at this. So you can see they had the projected D, which is the entry for that area. And uh, where the opportunity was for, for this trade, this was the stop loss. This is projected D, this is target one for the ratio. Really, really big pattern trade. Really, really big pattern trade. And uh, what ended up happening is I said, you could, you got two choices here, traders. You could enter the ratio trade and have a much bigger objective, or you could enter the trend trade and you could take a quicker target, whatever you choose to do. Uh, either way, you're going into wave three impulse. And so I took the entry on the pullback and I rode that down for my target. I rode that. It was a great profitable trade. Okay. <laughs> and uh, risk and reward was better on the prior trade. So that was great. And then what ended up happening is I could have rode that further down. They just tanked the market. They hit all targets on the ratio. It was a huge ratio trade. Huge trade. What I ended up doing is I ended up entering on wave four pullback here. But the reason I was really happy about this management I'll explain what we do is we use Fibonacci extensions for these trend trades, okay? We're coming into Fib resistance here. So we had a Fib level resistance here for confluence on the pullback. We also had volume there, but I took it off to show this example. But one thing I wanna mention is that the momentum oscillator was already extended and squeezing out on the other side. <laughs> so this was wave four pullback, very high risk, it was a very high risk trade. So in my mind, I told myself, if I'm going to take a stab at this, okay, I know that I'm on wave four and I know that my target objective is down here at the lows because it's wave four and because momentum's already squeezed against the direction, I'm getting out as soon as I can. And as soon as price came within one tick from my target, I just hit the close button because I don't want to get stuck in a higher low squeeze. The reason a higher low squeeze is evident here is because momentum is fading on the other side of it. Okay, momentum is fading on the other side of it. And they did pop up a little bit and they would have dropped down. You would have got more out of that trade. But let me explain why that, that trade is holding in here. That trade is holding in here because the two minute kicked in. <laughs> that trade is holding on here on the two minute. You want to know why it's holding on the two minute? Because we're in wave three extension on a much bigger trade. So this is wave three impulse. Price came back. This is the first pullback. Okay. On wave two, we're making lower lows in price. That's the first time we got wave two pullback, which is why we got a really big trade out of that. So the big thing to, to, to understand here is how we integrate multi time frame fractal analysis but we're not just using trend trades like we're we're using auction theory to tell us the directional sentiment of the trends we want to be trading we're using wave theory to understand the location of the impulse versus the correction which is why trends are working here okay and uh and when you align the auction with structure and then you use momentum for either overbought or oversold or follow through for trade analysis it becomes really really strong now this is a recap video so
obviously I can't teach you everything in one video, but what I can do is I can invite you into our trade room. And there's also a link below the, the video here that will teach you uh, futures 101. So if you're brand new to trading futures and you have no understanding of what this is and the terminology, you're in the right place. Okay. We've got eBooks for you. We've got introductory courses and we can have a trade room for you. So you can come in and watch us do it live traders. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up. If you like the content, I want to put value out on the on the channel. So make sure you're learning from it. And if you have any questions or comments, just shoot us an email. Look forward to trading with you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care, guys, and trade well.